Okay, so today I am finally going to get to play with my Sennelier Abstract Matte Acrylics. I can't wait to see what these look like. I didn't want to dive into these until I had a chance to video it for you guys. So, today's the day. And I may, let's see, I guess I'll start with a little bit of swatching. Some of the swatching videos we've done so far are the Turner Acrylic Gouache. Oh, this was swatching out my plein air palette and choosing the colors for it. There's a video on that. This was the Liquitex Acrylic Markers. I'll link to a video on all of these. Um, this, these were so much fun. This is the Liquitex Acrylic Gouache, which is a fairly new video that I did with color mixing. Lots and lots of color mixing. If you've watched that video, I got a little carried away. And the uh, video that I actually, let's see, by the time I post this video, this will actually be posted. This was the rest of the, um, the first Turner acrylic gouache that I, I'm sorry, the first Liquitex acrylic gouache that I tested was just the primary set. Just these little ones, the little primary set. And then someone gifted me a whole bunch more colors. So this one, was just swatching out those colors. I didn't do any more color mixing with that, which I actually meant to do, but I didn't. So this video will probably be up by the time you're watching this video with the Sennelier. Thought I would do a real quick swatch with the Sennelier since, since that seems to be how I'm starting all of these. And then I'm, I'm thinking about uh, jumping into a just an abstract landscape, something really loose. Going to try to use a really big brush and we'll see how that goes. Uh, it is really hot up here in the studio today, so I do have the air conditioner going. And fingers crossed that it's not making too much noise in the background for you guys to hear. If when I play this back, it sounds terrible, I'll just have to do a voiceover. So let's get started. Okay, I'm going to label and date the page with my favorite page labeling pen, which is the Prismacolor Premier. And it's the black. It's a dual tipped pen. I've shown this to you guys before. I'll try to link it below. I'll switch over to my Micron. It's a 05 tip pig. It's a Pigma Micron Black for labeling the paints. Now let's see how these things open. Hopefully they open better than the Liquitex did. If you saw my last video, that didn't go so well. Those Liquitex squash are really messy to open. And these look like they're going to be a piece of cake. Wow, interesting. I expected them to be more liquidy than that. Huh, very interesting. They have much more body than I thought they would. I thought they would be at least as liquidy as the Liquitex is. Okay, that's the red. Here's the yellow. Very interesting how thick they are. I don't know if you can tell from the video, but they're quite thick. Just because of the nature of them being in the pouch, I thought they would sort of just pour right out. Yellow, red, blue. Again, I'll try to give you an idea how thick they are. Quite thick. Just a dab of black. And I'll put some white here in the middle. Okay, 
kind of fascinated with these already because of the thick nature of the paint. Okay, let's give them a go. Now these, I forget if I mentioned, the, this is their primary set. So I had gone over the pigment numbers in the, la, um, in the Liquitex video, but this is primary blue, PB15, primary red, PV19, uh, primary yellow, PY74, uh, Mars black, PBK11, and titanium white, PV6, right? Or PW6, right? PW6. Okay. Hopefully. Very thick, you guys. Interesting. Wow. I think I'm going to try to zoom in on this a little more so you can see because it's so thick it actually holds a brush mark. It's not at all what I expected. Very thick. That's going to be fun to play with. Red. Wow, not nearly as fluid as the Liquitex. If you can see that, but that's thick, which you just wouldn't expect from something that comes in a pouch. And then the black. Oops, I just did that and you didn't see it, did you? I put a black line down and then did the white to try to show some opacity. Let me go back up to normal here. Now, I'll just do some, probably just do some secondary colors. I don't think I'm going to get carried away this time. Although if you watched my video with the Liquitex, you're probably laughing at me right now because <laughs> I got carried away. Let's try some orange. Nice orange, it's not overly bright, kind of a little muted. Try some more red in there. Mm, that's nice. Red orange. Let's see if I go a little more yellow with it. warms that yellow up really nicely. And let's add a touch of white. Should I red it back up first to get a brighter orange? And add some white in. Mm. Oh, such a pretty peach. So pretty. Wow, lovely muted peach. Okay, pretty. Let's see what we get for a violet. 
hunk of red, a little bit of blue, because remember this is like a phthalo blue, really strong, super easy to take too much. We'll do kind of a red violet. And then I will do a blue violet, so a little bit more of the blue. Nice violets. Supa dupa nice. And then I'll take a little bit of white into the blue violet. And make up a little bit more of the red violet. Pop of white. Very nice. Maybe even do one more pop of white on that. Bring it right down. Very nice. And then green. See what we got left for yellow. A smidge of blue. For a yellow green. Very vibrant spring green. A little more blue. strong red. Might have been a little too much of the red. And a muted green. I think I'll take that muted green down with white just to see what we end up with. Ooh, pretty. Okay. And then I actually should grab some more yellow because I always like to see what kind of um, greens you can get with your black. And I'm used to using ivory black as I mentioned in other videos other swatching videos and this is Mars black so let's see what we can get for a green muted yellow, ah, uh, muted green. Again, really nice.
Okay, so those are the mixes with the Sennelier primary abstract set. Nice mixes, nice clean mixes. Love the greens with the black, real happy with that. Okay, so let's see what kind of fun we can have with the paints, just doing super loose abstract landscape. Nice colors, really nice colors. Super saturated. One thing I'm noticing uh, with, as I fill my palette with a tube, you can back squeeze your paints back into the tube and with these that doesn't really seem to be possible they're thick when you squeeze them out and there seems to always be a little bit on the edge and it just doesn't seem like you can um, back squeeze it to get it back into the tube so that's a little bit of a thing with these because there always seems to be a little bit of a knob of it sticking out so far I like the the Liquitex and the uh, Turner acrylic gouache tubes better. I mean the Liquitex jars and the Turner Turner acrylic, acrylic gouache tubes. These are a little mm, cumbersome. Okay, so it's all the paint I'm going to squeeze out for now. I think I'm going to wish I was using a bigger palette than I am for mixing but we'll see it's a small it's a small page we'll see what happens I may wish I had put these in my stay wet palette instead of the ceramic palette
Okay, so this was a lot of fun. Um, Sennelier abstract. The only thing I can say is it was a lot thicker than I thought. If I had realized that, I probably would have masked off a larger piece of paper. I found that with the texture of the paint, it was a little challenging working in such a small area with such big brush. I used two brushes. I used that one and this one. And these are just cheap. I think these are both just cheap dollar store brushes. This is a one inch wash and they're soft brushes and this is a half inch wash. At least that's what they're calling it. And the scraper that Michael gave me the catalyst scraper that he gave me. So that was fun. What I did notice is that this um, Sennelier abstract dries so quickly that if I wanted to scrape, I literally had to lay the paint down and scrape immediately. If I let it sit at all, it just didn't want to move. It dries very quickly, but um, it was fun. It was fun to play with. It was fun um, that it did have a little bit of body and it was fun that you could take the scraper and scrape it down and get it to be a little more translucent. So let's see, let me take the tape off. And there it is. There's my palette afterwards. Definitely next time I would use either my Stay Wet Handy palette for a bigger mixing area, like that much room, or a piece of palette paper, a piece of glass, because it was with the big brush and the thicker paint it was challenging mixing in these little wells, but I made it work. Managed to do it. And there it is. Fun little abstract painting. You guys know me, I like to view on black. Viewing it on black. It looks lovely. Fun little painting. Loved using the scraper. Can't wait to do more with the scraper. That's the Sennelier primary set of abstract colors. Really surprised me. Not at all what I expected as far as texture and consistency, but I had a lot of fun with it. I'll put links to everything that I used in the show notes. Just click the little down arrow by the title and click the word more and you'll see links to where you can view or purchase all the items that I used in this video, which would include the sketchbook and the Snellier paints. The only thing I can't link you to is these brushes because like I said, they were just cheap dollar store brushes. I'm not even sure they have a brand name on it. Oh, Phoenix. It says Phoenix on them. So, all right, that's that one. I apologize again for the air conditioner. I hope it wasn't too loud, but it is so hot here in the studio today. Really blazing, blazing hot outside. So I had to run the AC. And not crazy about the pouches, but I do like the paint. I'll have to see if it comes in anything else other than the pouches. I'm not sure that it does. Not really sure what the idea behind the pouches are, but it is a paint that I would recommend.